or you can go to whatever, to your toilet. Hi guys, what's up? This is Mark from the Wi-Fi Ninjas and today I wanted to discuss positioning of different types of microphones with you. So what I mean by different types of microphones, there are condenser and dynamic mics that have different characteristics and there are different form factors of the microphones. There are end address mics uh, that you talk to the top of the microphone. There are side address mics where you talk to the side of the microphone. There are lavalier mics that you wear attached to your shirt and you have a cable hidden under uh, your, your shirt so it's not visible in the camera. And you have a shotgun mics uh, that are very long typically and positioned outside of the camera view. And you will position all these microphones differently depending on, on what mic you go for and what is your, your application. Since we are discussing positioning mics for the podcast here mostly, let's focus on, on that, starting with condenser versus dynamic mic. So dynamic microphones, they are, I think, more popular than condenser microphones for some, some reasons, valid reasons, actually. Uh, they have more of a stage sound to your voice, which is, which is probably a little bit flatter. Uh, it's not as standing out when you use a dynamic mic, typically. Uh, also, they have some cons, really. They require crazy amounts of gain. And if you have one of these mics and if you connect it to the interface that is not too strong, it doesn't have too strong preamp in it, it will be very either very uh, noisy or very quiet or both. Uh, you can make this issue go away by using something called an inline preamp. And this just preamplifies the signal before it gets to the preamp built into your interface that the microphone is connected to. By using inline preamps, you can reduce the amount of gain you use with your dynamic microphone and therefore you can make it louder and you can reduce some noise from a dynamic mic. Uh, alrighty, now the condenser mics, uh, they are more of a studio type of microphones. They have richer sounds, they have more color in them, uh, they have more depth perhaps and at this point, I think it's a personal choice between the dynamic and condenser. It's whatever you feel sounds better with your voice, whatever you want to achieve. I personally prefer condenser mics, but most of my podcasting friends, they prefer dynamic mics. So I guess it's, it's up to, to you. There is one common misconception about the background noise where people claim that dynamic mics, they uh, get way less background noise in the recording than the condenser mics. And while typically it is true, you can buy condenser mics that have high pass filters built in, like my Rode NT2000 or my previous Rode Rodecaster. And you can take my word for it uh, that they do not pick up any more background noise than the best in class dynamic mics like Shure SM7B would. Okay, it's possible with condenser mic. Uh, so it's just a matter of what you prefer when it comes to the sound of the microphone. When it comes to positioning dynamic and condenser microphones, that's where I can see quite a lot of a difference. And what I mean by that is that dynamic mics, typically they have to be very close to your mouth to sound good. Best sound quality from, from them will be when you, when you are like up to three inches away from, from your mouth, which makes the microphone very close to you and it gives you not enough wiggle room, in my opinion. So when you're close to the microphone, when it sticks out, when it's like, it's here, all right? When you talk to the left side of the screen or to the right side of the screen, and I have a massive ultra wide band, ultra wide band, <laughs> ultra wide screen in front of me or to the center, it makes a difference when you have just microphone free just away from your mouth. Uh, and you want really to have some wiggle room when you talk, when you when you teach, because even if you want to like, you know, use your hands uh, to help you talking, or if you are looking at different sides of the screen, you don't want your voice to sound massively different. And I think positioning microphone too close to your to your mouth for the best sound quality is very limiting for for you as a speaker. 
and with dynamic mics, when you put them farther away from the mouth, outside of the camera view, you need to have crazy amount of gain for them to work. And what I concluded is that dynamic mics, mostly outside of the camera view, they A, don't sound as good as when you compare uh, three inches away from a mouth, let's, let, let's say. And also they will require even more gain and more gain is more noise. And it's really not too, not too good at that point. So if you don't mind having a mic slightly closer to your mouth, visible in the camera view, then dynamic mic might be for you. I was using a broadcaster mic with, for a proximity effect very close to my mouth for, for almost a year. And it was absolutely fine, but I got tired of it. And therefore I've decided that I need to have a microphone outside of the camera view that gives me more wiggle room. Condenser mics, they also sound best when you eat them up. And by sound best, let me show you what I mean. It's like I'm now six inches away from the mic. And when I get closer to the mic, you will hear that my, my, my voice is richer, deeper. I'm not sure if it's better for, for, for podcast application. I actually think that when I'm eating up the mic, like I am now, I'm very close to the mic, like two, three inches away maybe, it exaggerates the bass of my voice a little bit. And that, when you record a podcast locally, might not be an issue, but when you record podcast over internet, it might give you like this compressed bassy sound that is very unpleasant to your to your ear. So I would be careful with proximity effect for podcasting, really. Uh, eating mics up might sound best locally, but it might not be the case when it's recorded somewhere else outside of your studio or listened to on a cheaper audio equipment. Like not everyone has an audiophile grade, great headphones or a good decent uh, audio system in their cars. Some people, they will just listen on a computer speakers and a very bassy sound, it will just vibrate and compressed over the internet, it will be really, really uh, bad. By compressed, I mean, let's say when we re record a video podcast with Matthew, he records audio and video locally on his machine. So his video and audio is local to him, best possible quality, but my audio and video will get compressed over the internet by a tool that we use. It might be Skype or Zoom or whatever you use. It will get compressed. It will change the way you look and sound. And it sounded crap with my broadcaster. Hence, I have something that is a little bit flatter. Uh, now, it's not as, as rich. NT2000 seems to be the perfect blend of the richness and flatness of a, of a sound, if that, if that makes sense. Most dynamic mics won't suffer from that, from that issue. Alrighty. So... Three inches away or less, it gives you like this good proximity effect, uh, which not always is, is good. If you want to put your microphone farther away from your mouth, some microphones, they will do it better than the others. And I found that uh, dynamic mics like Rode PodMic or Shure SM7B, they were fairly decent at being like four or five inches away from the mouth. So they will be... Let me grab like a, I don't know, like a TV remote. They will be like somewhere, somewhere here, okay? So they are in your camera view. They are slightly in a way, but when you talk outside of the mic, they will completely change the way they sound. So it's probably not too, not too good. If I want to move them farther away, then I have to increase gain and I have a problem. So four or five inches away, uh, dynamic mics, they, they might be still, uh, still good. But what happens when you want to position the microphone uh, outside of the camera view? You have to have your mic at least six, seven inches away. That's how far my microphone is from my mouth uh, right now. At which point I couldn't find a dynamic mic that was still sounding very well, very good at this distance. Uh, so NT2000, the mic that I'm using now, sounds absolutely smashing at the distance. I have NT1, cheaper mic, that is also a side address microphone, by the way. Uh, I use it for, for gaming and for playing piano and stuff. Uh, it's also very good at that, like six, seven inches away, it sounds, sounds fantastic. But sometimes you need to have a mic positioned farther away from you. What if you have three people in your podcast and you want to have an interview with a video on with all of them? 
it's difficult in a small room to give every person, you know, a microphone. So so they just have it around the small table and everyone talks to their own mic and other mics they don't pick that up. It might be it might be quite challenging. What might be easier is to put a microphone like one meter away from from the group of people in your in your video podcast. And for that application, a shotgun mic might be uh, might be really good because you can position it like one meter away or two meters away even, and it will still sound very uh, well in a good conditions. Because what we have to be mindful of, the farther away you place your mic from your mouth, the more room acoustics will matter. Okay. So when you eat up the microphone, it doesn't really matter where you sit. You can go to the church or you can go to wherever, to your toilet and start recording a podcast and it will sound decent with a decent microphone. When you start putting it like, you know, five, six, seven inches away and you don't have any acoustic treatment done in your room, you have lot of, lots of echo and reverb, you will start hearing that. And with a shotgun mic, it's extremely exaggerated, right? I went for uh, like a really good shotgun mic NTG8 that is 800 pounds worth of a microphone. I position it uh, 60 or 70 centimeters away from my mouth outside of the camera view on top of the camera. And in acoustically untreated room, it sounded dreadful. Uh, it was picking up all the echo and reverb and it just sounded very bad. Now, I still had this mic like, you know, a few weeks back. Uh, it's on eBay now, actually. Uh, when I have the room acoustically treated quite nicely, it sounds fantastic. But I don't intend to keep it because I think that NT2000 positioned outside of the camera view sounds better and it's still outside of my uh, of my way. When I teach, when I need to scribble something on my iPad in front of me, it, I just don't uh, see this microphone. It's out of my, of my way. So depending on different distance from the microphones that you want to achieve, you might want to pick up different mic. I wanted to have a mic that allows me to record with a mic outside of the camera view. That's why uh, I have narrowed the choice of my mics to either shotguns or good quality condenser mics. So dynamic mics were out of the equation at that point. So let's discuss different form factors and how they affect placement and a distance positioning of the microphone. Let's start with lavalier mics. So lav mic, a small mic attached to your shirt, is typically close to your mouth-ish, it's like, you know, several centimeters away. Uh, follow your manufacturer guidelines. You will have a cable under your shirt. And when you move around, the microphone moves with you. So it's good. It will still make a massive difference if you talk to the screen or if you talk to the, you know, to your iPad it will pick up your voice differently in most cases. So you have to be careful with that. When you scratch your, you know, tits, it will pick it up. When you move around, so your shirt makes noises, it will pick that up. Uh, you can have a lavalier that has a wireless connectivity. So like our friend Fernay, uh, he has a nice lav mic attached to, 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 to himself when he teaches his amazing classes. And when he moves around, the mic moves with him and he sounds consistently well and he likes to walk around while he teaches so that mic that might uh, make sense for you if that's how how you want to use your mic it sounds good enough for podcast applications and you have just one way of positioning it so it's easy then you have the end address microphones end address it means that it has a membrane on top of the mic so you talk to the top of the microphone so let's say if my remote is a microphone again i'm not talking to it like this okay i'm talking to it like that so I talk to my microphone to the top of the mic. And the problem is that if I want to position it close to my mouth, so, so this microphone sounds good, the top end, uh, the end address microphone, it will stick out too close to my keyboard, too close to my iPad, and it's in my way. If I put it diagonally, it will, it will work very well as well. Uh, there is nothing wrong with positioning microphone like this, like end address microphone diagonally. So it faces my mouth, but my my mouth doesn't point back at the microphone. When I talk to the screen, to the center of the screen, it sounds consistently good. When I talk towards the mic, it will be louder. When I talk outside of the mic, like facing the other direction, then it will sound considerably quieter. So we have to be careful with that. And then when you move the mic farther away from your mouth, uh, it's closer to something else. So now I've moved my you know, TV remote uh, closer uh, outside of the camera view with 
you know, end address TV remote. <laughs> and now it's too close to my touchpad. Uh, so I can't use that because it's almost touching, touching that thing up. And then you'll have a cable sticking out of the back as well. And some mics, they are very long, uh, the end address mics like Aston Stealth. So it's very difficult to position this mic, uh, this type of mic microphones. Positioning the mic on the diagonal, there is nothing wrong with that as well versus positioning it in front of you like this. Uh, well, you, when you position it in front, so you point at the microphone and microphone points back at your, at your mouth, it probably sounds best, but also you have problems with plosives at this point. So when you exhale uh, air through your nose and through your mouth and it might be picked up by the microphone. So you might need to have a pop filter if you want to put a microphone in front of your face. Pop filter also dampens the sound a little bit. So positioning to the side might help you with plosives, but it will give you even less wiggle room and it will still be in your way. So end address microphones, I find them very difficult to position the way I like. So as sure SM7B, uh, Aston Stealth Broadcaster, pod mic, uh, for me, they are too, not too practical, okay? Now you have a side address microphones, so you don't talk to them like that anymore. Now you talk to the front of the of the mic, uh, to the side of the mic, I should say. Uh, side address microphones is like NT1 that I have, NT2000 that I am using now, and I find them way easier to position than the end address microphones. And this is because you can have the mic in front of you from coming from the uh, from from the bottom part. Of your uh, of your desk, you can have it hung from the top. You can have it like you know uh, vertically, or horizontally, or on the diagonal. For as long as it faces your mouth, kind of, uh, you are good to go. So look at how I have positioned my uh, side address uh, microphone so it's as close to my mouth as possible while being outside of my view uh, of the camera view and outside of my way. It is just here, so I will tap that. It's around six inches away from my mouth, and I think it still sounds great. And that's how it's positioned. Okay. Uh, camera won't focus on that, but I, I hope you can you can see. So I will just position it back here. So this is towards my left hand side uh, of my keyboard. I can still see my iPad. I can see my keyboard, my mouse, my trackpad. Everything is visible to me. It's not in my way, and it's just six inches away so it still uh, still sounds uh, very very good and positioning it like this it was the discovery of the year for me i always had like a microphone in my head is in front of you always so it's in your way so it's either like a microphone in front or a shotgun uh, but it's not the case you can you can have it done horizontally like i did and it sounds very well it points at my mouth directly and my mouth doesn't point back at it directly it's slightly to the side but it's far enough from my mouth so it doesn't make a difference too much of a difference if i'm talking to the center of a screen versus towards the microphone versus outside of the microphone away from the microphone so this is now away from the mic center of a screen towards the mic away from the mic center towards the mic okay so it doesn't make too much of a difference. It gives me space to move a little bit while not being in a way. Great way of positioning a side address mic. That is why at this point, I would only use side address mics for my podcasts in front of my camera at my desk. No other, no other uh, mics can cut it to my studio now. Then you have the shotgun mic and you will position it uh, differently, right? So you will talk to... Uh, to the end of a shotgun so when this is a shotgun my finger you talk towards the finger okay like this and then you can position it under your screen or on top of your screen depending on what shotgun mic you go for there are some shorter and longer shotgun mics like ntg2 that our good friend dan has is relatively short so you can have it on your desk like you would like i don't know a yeti microphone uh, I used to have NTG8, very long, 70 long centimeters shotgun mic. So it's not practical for me to be sticking out from the bottom of my screen. I had to position it on top of my camera, on the diagonal, pointing towards my mouth, around 70 centimeters away. And it worked very well at that, uh, at that distance. I've even done some tests where I was like two meters away from the shotgun mic. And in my decently uh, treated room, it still sounded uh, very well. 
And this is pretty much everything that I wanted to, to talk to you about when it comes to positioning of a mics. If you have other ideas about how you do it that might sound better, be more of the way, let me know. But my conclusions, they are based on several hours, like several hours, like quite a lot of hours of testing different mics, uh, some of them for a few months. So I think it's quite conclusive. Thank you very much, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.